liked it? What did you like about it? I like the ending part. Okay. Did you learn something? What did you learn? Tell me what you learned. Uh, I learned to like, sit up straight. I'm sure your mom tells you that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't learn that. Yeah. But it reinforced. Yeah. So what do you want to do with the rest of your life? Have you ever given us some thought today? Probably going to astronomy. Okay, good. Okay. Why astronomy? Because I like that, I like it, and it's just like learning about space. Good. So how's your math? How's your math and science? What math are you doing? I'm in math. Okay, what grade are you in? That's good. That's good. So you take geometry next year. You're ahead of the pack. That's good, man. That's good. Really Keep that. What's your name? Nice. What school do you go to? Okay, good. Are you in uh, the, the, pro the merge program? Okay. 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 So uh, what languages are you taking? Spanish. Spanish one or two? Uh, so is your second year Spanish? My first year. First year? Okay. And you're in eighth grade? Yes. Okay, good. So uh, I would like for you to apply to the IV program. And also the um, one at the other school, the other school, the high school. But uh, Richard, Richard Montgomery has an IV program. Very, very good program. You should seriously uh, consider applying for it. Okay? My son might be there. So you're looking now for a job, summer job, 
about internship and all of that time. Hopefully go to NFL for me. Okay, good. Yeah. good. So when in that environment, you're going to meet some really type A people, whether yeah. they're the players or whether they're the coaches. The coach is pretty, he's pretty, he's pretty tight. And so this is a good thing, again, learning some of the stuff. Yeah. Even though you're, you're ahead of your you're already in college, but it's, you, it's never, to, you can always learn, how am I going to sell myself? Yeah. How can I adjust? What do I want to do? Okay? And you can go around and give some feedback and give some advice to some of these other folks, too. Yeah. Okay? Or some of the young ones, too. Okay. All right. Now, where'd you go to high school? Uh, Poolville. Okay. Good. Uh, were you in the? Uh, oh, uh, Were you in the program? Oh, that local school? Right? They, 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 they have the, the um, science math. No, no, I was just went to local school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Collegiate sports. There you go. All right. If you got your hand raised, I want to hear what your sport is and what college you plan to play it at. Norfolk State. Anybody know where Norfolk State is? Norfolk, Virginia. Okay, it's a historically black college. There you go. Stand up. Tell us what you want to play. What position? What's your, what's your 40 time? He play wherever he wants to play. Stand up. Tell us what you want to play. You have to. 
to look at better. Who's got dad at home? Okay, who doesn't have dad at home? Okay, and by the way, my dad wasn't at home. If my dad walked in this room right now, I couldn't tell you it was my dad. I don't even have a picture of my father. So when I heard those young men talk about their father was their mentor, I was like, whoo. My mentor were the men in my neighborhood. My mentor was my baseball coach, who was the scariest man I'd ever seen in my life. He was big, tall, he had a deep voice, and he was muscular. He walked, we call him Mr. Horton. He walked around like this. He told my mother that my younger brother was a better baseball player than me. And I had to call him and say, what do you mean, coach? He's like, he's going to be a better player than you. I'm like, he must be crazy to myself. <laughs> Not out loud, but to myself. First of all, we've got to understand what they don't teach us. How much do you learn about yourself in school? When you're reading those books, how, much, how often do you see yourself in school? A little bit, a lot, or not at all. So, young people, if you want to become the great person you're supposed to become, you've got to start reading books about people who look like you. You've got to read a book where you talk about your Christopher Columbus. You've got to read a book where you talk about your Thomas Edison. Because if not, we go through school not knowing how great we truly are. Another exercise for me. i got to keep y'all busy and focused. Look around this room. Make a mental note of everything around us right here that's great. Not out loud, to yourself. Everything here that's great. Not to, just to yourself. Mental note. You don't have to point anybody. Just to yourself. We good? Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Not out loud to yourself. Tell me everything in this room that's orange. Orange. Not out loud to yourself. You all can open your eyes. What did I originally ask you for? So you're ready to tell me everything that was red, correct? Then what did I ask you for? Recognize this in your life, even as young people. Whatever you focus on is what you see. How many of you know people who are negative from sun up to sundown? Everything out their mouth is negative. How many of you know people who are positive from sun up to sundown? How many of you, even at your young age, consider yourself a positive person? Some of y'all laugh. You put your hands down. You need to stay positive. Negativity does no good. You all need to stay positive. My company is called Affirmations, and that's because it's important to me that we feel good about ourselves. So from now on, for the short time that I have left with you all, every time I say affirmation, I need you all to say action. Affirmation. Action. Affirmation. Affirmation. Action. Folks, we're, some of us may bring some of these things to the table on occasion, but this isn't how we're going to define ourselves. If you all do nothing else before when you leave here, go home and read something about people who look like you that uplifts you. Because if you read books by us, you understand this don't define who we are. No group of people in this country have overcome the stuff we've overcome. What Trayvon went through in, in Florida is what we've been going through from the first day we landed on this planet. First day, we lazy, we a whole lot of stuff, folks. Lazy's not one of them. If we were so lazy, they wouldn't have got on that boat and brought us over here to work from sun up to sundown, from no sun to no sun for no money. So don't ever let anybody tell you you're lazy. Now, well, some of us are scary. Some of y'all are so great, you're scared to be great. Some of y'all are so scared of success that you sabotage yourself. In life, you've got to figure out you can be the thermostat or you can be the thermometer. The thermometer tells you what the temperature is right now. The thermostat controls the temperature. If the thermostat in this room is set for 64 degrees and it gets to 65, it comes down. But if your personal thermostat is set for 64 and all of a sudden you get 85, great. All of a sudden you get scared to start to sabotage yourself and go back to the temperature you think you're supposed to be at. You can't be afraid to be the only great person in the room. How do you greet people in the morning? It's 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm, I'm wherever you are in high school or whatever school you had in your neighborhood. Good morning, sir. How are you today? Good morning. How are you? Good morning.
morning. How are you? 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 Uh, how are you doing, sir? Y'all have to find greetings that empower you. Find something that motivates you and keeps you going. Steve, how are you doing? Wonderful. Am I always wonderful? No. But I program myself. Every time I say wonderful, I get a burst of energy. I have another greeting. Ask me how I'm doing. Unstop. Now, you want to creep your friends out tomorrow morning, be unstuck. <laughs> you can laugh because my personality, I say it in a whole lot of different ways. Some days I'm just unstoppable. The next time you see me, I'm unstuck. <laughs> Catch me on a Friday, Saturday night, I had a couple glasses of water with some cues, I'm on and mother flanking stuff. <laughs>
that's a baby semi-cup. Nah, that's a little too big, too. Those are plate tests, cool strips, and baby bottles. D, baby thermometer. If you put this down as a first aid item, only if you put this down as a first aid item, you might want to shut that door because they got other people out there. You come in, you got to shut the door. If you put down that this item was between six and eight dollars, give yourself a checkpoint along with the fact that it's a first aid item. I thought it was even more. Car seat, give me some numbers. What letter was that? Thirty. If you put that a car seat costs between eighty and a hundred dollars, you give yourself a checkpoint. If you put that a car seat was a safety item, give yourself a checkpoint. If you're not paying attention, you're not going to get your checks. If you put that a car seat was a safety item, give yourself a check mark, Captain, Coach. If you give, if you gave yourself eighty to one hundred dollars as an estimated cost, give yourself another check. Stroller, hundred to one hundred and twenty dollars. Oh, it's a safety item. You put hundred and twenty dollars. That's correct. I thought we only had two cars. I put one fifty. You don't get a check. If you put a stroller as a safety item because it's not food, it's not clothing, it's not, it's not furniture. It's a safety item because it protects your child when you're carrying the child. And when you go to look at them, you're going to see that a car seat is designed for the safety of your child. Hundred to one hundred and twenty dollars. Give yourself a check mark. And the last item, onesies, clothes. Very simple. If you put between seven and ten dollars for a free pack, give yourself a checkpoint for clothes, and give yourself a checkpoint for the price. One of my coaches taught me this. I was playing receiver. The ball would go up. I would lose it in the sun, incomplete every time. Every time. Who said that? So, you might be on where I am. What he did for me was he put his hand up in front of the sun. He said, follow my hand. And, and even in the sun, he said, the sun is in your eyes, but your eyes are going to follow my hand if you let it. Don't lose the hand. So sure enough, I followed his hand. I couldn't see past the sun, but my eyes stayed with that hand. I did the same thing with the ball. I caught the ball every time. Caught it every time. This guy, he's turning, he's dizzy, but what's going to help him? What he's looking at, his focus is on the ball. You ever seen ice skaters, do they get dizzy when they're turning like that? You know why? Because they pick a point. They keep their eye on it. That's why when you see them, they turn their head, bounce, snap right back to the same place. Because they focused on something. Keep your eye on the ball. What is your goal in life? What's that thing you want to do? You got to see it past the shine. Listen, you going to get on college campus? I know. I think I went to college for two things, football and girls. Really? But that thing will throw you off, I tell you what. Because I had a baby before I left there. And you don't want to be in that position. Now, you don't want to get forced out. But you got to keep your a laser focus. Because I tell you what, you going to have your eye on that ball and she going to walk by and be shining. Oh, she going to be shining. But you got to be able to see past that. You got to keep your eye on the ball. The next play will give you all of them and then you can get out of here. The next play is you got to know your star player. That's you. You got to know what your strengths, talents, talents, abilities, and resources are. There are things that you got right now around you that's going to help you to get where you want to go. You, got, you guys, one of your resources is each other. Because you got the same kind of attitude and you have a winning attitude. If you've never played sports again, You're, you've been willing each time to do these exercises. That kind of heart will always cause you to win. You'll never lose with that kind of heart because you're what somebody would call a constant student. And it doesn't matter what degree you get, stay a constant student because you'll always win. You'll find a way around. You see, men find a way to get it done. That's what we do. Your wife say, baby, we ain't got enough. What are you going to do? 
You gonna figure out something. You gonna figure out. You got to. You can't have. You can't have people hungry looking back at you. No, you gotta find a way. That's what men do. You guys inspire me because you got those traits. You got those qualities. You got that. Remember that. Remember what I'm telling you today. And don't ever forget it. And I listen. I'm not talking to everybody because I haven't seen everybody the same way. But the truth is the same for you. Just like I say, stay a constant student. Find a way to get it done. Find a way. Man, we don't say, well, man, listen, we're doing that game. We don't say, find a way to do it. Find a way where you, you know, just, just do it without the melody. Find a way to win. That's what winners do. That's what men do. They find a way to win. The new coach over here, Wheaton High School. I uh, just wanted to come in and meet a lot of you guys and tell you guys that I'm definitely honored to be here and I'm definitely pleased to see you guys really become a game changer. Uh, I'm going to just give you a brief introduction of who I am and why being a game changer is important. Uh, I'm going to start with academics because that's what everyone has hit on so far. I personally, when I was coming through school, I was a phenomenal athlete. I was a phenomenal football player. In high school, I chose to love football more than the classroom. And because of that decision, I became an average student at best, but a great football player. So when my four years were up in high school, my options were very, very limited. No one wanted me. No one. And that's the worst feeling in the world when everybody's talking to you and telling you all the things that you can have and then when that time comes, and they looked at my grades, and they turned their backs on me. So at that point, I realized that I had to change something. Something had to change. You know, because I love football more than anything. You know, and I knew that in my mind. And that feeling of somebody else having the power to take away something that I love the most was the worst feeling. So what I did was, I got a second chance. And how I got that second chance was uh, somebody looked out for me. You know, somebody looked out for me and they introduced me to a junior college coach. And based on that, I knew that academics would never ever be a problem for me ever again. And that's when I started to become a game changer. I took on the classroom the same way I took on the football field. So my freshman year of junior college, I was an All-American as a defensive back on the field and an All-American academic. My sophomore year, I was All-American as a running back. And when I got my second chance again, I had scholarships from over 40 schools. I could pick any school in the country almost that I wanted to go to. You know, and it meant the world to me. It meant the world to me that I knew that no one could ever have to take that away from me again. You know, now when I got to, I chose to go to the University of Pittsburgh. That's where I ended up going to school. When I got to the University of Pittsburgh, I took on the classroom just like I took on the field, you know, with full steam ahead, 100%. I did well in the classroom. Unfortunately, my junior year, I broke both of my legs. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I was on crutches, between crutches and the wheelchair for approximately about seven months before I was capable. I broke my fingers, the two largest bones in the human body, supposedly the strongest. You know, freak accident, no one really knows how it happened. But if I hadn't became a game changer in the classroom, I wouldn't have anything to fall, to fall back on. So that was very, very important. You know, and now I look back, I'm so blessed that I got, I got somebody, someone gave me that second chance and I had an opportunity to take advantage of a second chance. And I did, and it still worked out for me. I got myself together, and I ended up playing a couple of years in the Arena Football League. So I played a couple of years in the pro, you know, but now I had the opportunity to give back. So I decided to go into coaching so that I can make sure that the next generation won't have the same mistakes that I made if I can help them. So listen. So I wanted to give back, and that's why I'm coaching high school football now. And I wanted to take time out today to come and let you guys know that I am proud of each and every one of you for just being here today. Because a lot of people have been giving you guys a lot of valuable information. And me as a coach, 
average. You know, they say the 2.0 grade point average is what they consider acceptable. As a coach, my bar is raised high. You know, I took on a program when kids are below a 2.5, I will not let them play that way. Sometimes that, you know, affects wins and losses. But in the big picture, it helps you understand what commitment is and how to win on higher scales.